Um, okay, now back to Jericho. We're going to talk about Rahab, the prostitute, um, and some of the stuff going on with her. Joshua chapter 2. Um, let me just read the initial verses there with Rahab. She's the harlot of Jericho. And it says, Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies from Shittim, go over the land, go, go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab. Why would they go into a Canaanite prostitute's house? Question, would it be easy access, in and out? No problem going in and out, right? Question, would she know everything that was going on in the city? Like, would she know everything that was going on in the city? Would she be a good person if you're a spy? I mean, would she be a good person to talk to? Okay, so they go into, she's a Canaanite prostitute, stayed there. The king of Jericho was told, look, some of the Israelites have come tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and entered your house, because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. And she said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they came from. Question, is that a flat out lie? Soon as those guys said two words, would she know exactly where they were from? That they were Jews, that they were not Canaanites. Are there dialectical differences in these areas that you know exactly? I ask you, I say, um, I'm going to go get my car, my car down in Boston. Okay, bo Boston. Okay, question. As soon as I say car, everybody, or, oh, no, no, let's do this. I had a good idea, I had a good idea the other day. Okay, shall I go on? This is really disgusting, isn't it? Anyways, question. Do you know that I'm from Boston when I say idea, right? Or law. Do you ever hear how they say law? They say law, or they put an R in law. <laughs> Drives me nuts. I can't even pronounce it. Okay, question. But if I say, if I say, y'all coming over to my house tonight? Then have I just gone below this, the Mason-Dixon, okay? My wife, she always used to get really angry at me because she said, she said, I ain't learning my kids to talk like this because we were down in Tennessee, and I kind of like the people talk down there like that because, uh, anyways, they're real, re they're real relaxed and they can talk. And anyways, this is on tape, and so I'll probably get crucified now. Uh, but anyways, uh, my wife is a real English major. She's a real English major, you know, speak English, Speak English proper. Lee. Lee, okay. Yeah, she's always into that. So, all right. Rahab, so Rahab hides the people. He hides the two spies, and then she tells the king what? It's really cool. She says, oh, oh, they were here. Yeah, they were here, but they left. They went back. If you guys run after them quickly, you can catch them. So she basically sends them on a wild goose chase. And then, is that, by the way, did Rahab lie to this guy? The king's men. Did, he, did she lie? What does that remind you of? Somebody else who lied that protected the lives of somebody and God approved of it and blessed them. The, uh, yeah, the midwives in Egypt. This is a similar situation, isn't it? Have you got Jews in your basement? No, they went that away. Okay? You know what I'm saying? And God, does, by the way, does God approve of Rahab? The whole city is destroyed. Who is spared? Rahab. Oh, no, no, no. You don't get away that easy. Okay, is Rahab approved of God? Not only does she, not only does she get spared, whose genealogy does Rahab, the Canaanite prostitute, whose genealogy does this woman end up in? Jesus. Yeah, Matthew chapter one, when they're going down, you know, Abraham with Isaac and Jacob, and it goes all the way down. It says Rahab, Rahab, the Canaanite prostitute, is in the line of the Messiah. Okay, so is this lady kind of? Okay, so all I'm trying to say is, in war, in war, can you use deception? In war, can you use deception the same way you do in basketball when you throw a fake? It's accepted in, you know, war context, generals try to fake each other out. Does she deceive them, and does she get away with it? She gets away with it, and now what happens? Down in chapter 2, verse 9, there's a wonderful statement here. Listen to what Rahab says. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof, and she said to them, check this out. I know that Yahweh, and it, use, it uses the name Yahweh, I know that Yahweh has given you this land to you, and that great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting from fear because of you. We have heard how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea. Did she know about the Red Sea crossing? How would she know that? 
Guess what? When people, when traders came out of Egypt, would they bring that story right up, go across to Jericho, question, she knows every, okay, never mind. But anyways, she goes across, would she know these stories? She knows, she tells the spies. She, the spies don't tell her about the Red Sea crossing. She tells the spies, we know about what your Yahweh did, drying up the Red Sea, okay? And she goes on, and what you did to Sion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted and everyone's courage failed because of you. For Yahweh your God, check this out, Yahweh your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. Yahweh your God is, is God of heaven above and on earth below. Question, is that a better statement than you get from most of the Jews? I mean, that's a better statement full of faith more than most of the Jews. And so, anyway, so she goes on and stuff. She says, please swear to me by Yahweh, that, or the Lord, that, that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. I said, I've shown kindness to you, you show kindness to me. Lex talionis and things. And so what happens? Does God spare Rahab the harlot? She lets the guys out the window. The guy said, hey, when we come back, what do you got to do for your window? Tie a little what? Red, yeah, you got to tie a red cord on your window that will know it's your house. And bam, when the walls go down, guess whose house is left standing? Guess who gets spared? Rahab the harlot gets spared. Is she accepted into Israel? She gets accepted into Israel, ends up in the Messiah's genealogy. Is this lady incredible? This is an incredible lady. Now, I want to show you one other thing that you miss if you don't know the geography. I want to show you what is the role of women in war? What is the role of women in war? Do women go out and say, oh, you know, I know Taekwondo or I'm, I'm Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, man, I can take you down. Okay, do women do that in war? Do women in war in the Old Testament, do they outfox the men? In other words, that's what happens, they outsmart them. You just gotta be aware of women's with nail hammers and pegs, you know, and stuff. But, but anyways, um, so basically what she does is, here's what she does, it's really interesting. Now she's in Jericho, Jericho's down here in the valley, right? So they come down the valley, they're down the valley. When you're being chased by your enemies, what direction do you usually go? Okay, um, let me just say, when I was younger, I grew up, now you understand when I talk about gangs, I'm not talking about, you guys do real gang bangers, okay? I'm not talking about that. We had two groups in our, groups in our neighborhood. Once one guys, they were smokers and drinkers, and we were guys that always played the sports kind of stuff. And so basically, we banged heads with these guys, okay? And so we did some stuff that was over on their turf. They didn't like it, and so they start chasing us. When you get chased, what direction? Do you always run home, okay? So you run home, okay? So what happens here, the spies get out of the, out of the city. What direction are they going to run? They're going to run up here to Mount Nebo. They're going to run back to all the Jews where they got protection, right? If they run that direction, if they run east, who are they going to run into? The king's men who are coming back from the Jordan River. So what does Rahab tell them? Rahab says, do not run to the Jordan River. You'll get captured. Run instead the exact opposite way they would have run, run up to the mountains. And so basically she tells them, climb this mountain, sit up in the mountain. When they're sitting on the mountain, can they see the king's men come back into the city? There'll be, it's just like you can see, you're up on the mountain, they can't see you, you can see them. When they come back in the city, then what do you do? You run around them and you're, you're all safe. By the way, was that really wise and good advice? This woman is shrewd, okay? She's really shrewd and she gives them some really good advice and spares the life of these guys and that's how she, she wins the day. And so Rahab was quite, quite a lady and uh, she's the hero in, of the story and things. Now, the Jordan River. They're going to go up to the Jordan River. They're going to cross the Jordan River. What do you know about the Jordan River? The jo Jordan River is chilly and cold, chills the body and not the soul. Okay, the Jordan River. Uh, let me just talk a little bit about the Jordan River. Uh, first time I saw the Jordan River, first of all, I grew up in the Niagara River. Is the Niagara River a river? Have any guys ever been to Niagara Falls? It's about a mile wide and stuff. It's a, it's a real river. I get over to Israel and I go up to the Jordan River. The Jordan River on average is 60 feet wide 60 feet wide and three feet deep. Now question, where I come from, is that a river? We call those creeks where I come from, okay? My father-in-law came over to visit us in Israel and we took him all around Israel and after the end, he was kind of getting upset with me. He says, I want to go down and see the Jordan River. I go all over Israel, I haven't seen the Jordan River. I said, Grandpa, I don't want to take you down there. I said, wait, it's just like Woods Creek, it's nothing. 
So I said, okay, okay, one night, let's go down. We're down. So we drive the car up at night, and I shine my lights on the Gorp Jordan River. He then really gets mad at me and says, that's not the river. He said, that's an irrigation ditch. <laughs> and it's like, it's the Jordan River, you know, and stuff. But at that place, they had uh, concrete going down the Jordan River and stuff. So all I'm telling you is the Jordan River. Now, you say, wait a minute, the Jordan River is 60 feet wide, 3 feet deep. What's the big deal about crossing the Jordan River? I forgot to tell you something. When are they crossing the Jordan River? We know when. When they get across the Jordan River, they're going to celebrate what on the other side when they go to Gilgal? They're going to celebrate a feast of, does anybody remember that? Passover. So they're going to cross the Jordan River and celebrate the Passover. Question, do we know exactly when that is then? Is it in the spring about our Easter time? What's the problem with the Jordan River in the springtime that's coming out of the rainy season? It's in flood stage. The Jordan River in flood stage can be a mile wide. Okay, so the Jordan River that the, by the way, did the spies get across the Jordan River with no divine intervention? Did the spies cross the Jordan River on their own? It can be crossed even at flood stage by, you know, a person that knows how to swim and stuff. You can cross it. By the way, people have drowned in the Jordan River too. I don't mean to make too light of this, but anyway, so the spies get across it and stuff. God, is God going to dry up the Jordan River? Yes, he is, okay. Crossing the Jordan River, was it a miracle or was it natural causes? In chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, let me just read these verses talking about the Jordan River and the drying up. Listen very carefully. By the way, when they went across the Red Sea, do you remember what it said in the Red Sea? Was there water on the left and the right piled up on both sides, like a wall on both sides? The Red Sea was piled up on left and right when they went across, not with the Jordan River. Now, the Jordan River is at flood stage all during harvest. It's the spring harvest, the harvest of wheat and barley. Yet as soon as the priest who carried the ark reached the Jordan, their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. Do you see what's going on? Is it the water's piled up like a wall, or did the water stop flowing from upstream? And it piled up, a great, it piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam. About 10 miles north of where they crossed, there's, the Jordan River goes through a canyon. That canyon wall has twice in history, that we know from history, has collapsed. The canyon wall collapses and forms a dam and dams up the Jordan River. In 1927, in 1927, one of those collapses happened. And this actually recorded, we've got written record. Basically, the canyon wall collapsed, the Jordan River dried up. So question, is it possible that God used it says that, that the water stopped up at the dam, which is exactly where this canyon is. Is it possible that God used natural means to accomplish his purposes? By the way, is it still a miracle? It happened twice in history that we know of, twice in 2,000 years. The priests go up and put their feet in it, and all of a sudden the water goes down. Question, is that a miracle of timing, if nothing else? You know what I'm saying? So what I'm, so I'm saying it's a miracle of God, but God could use natural means. And it seems like here that the water did pile up up at Adam, and so it's possible that he used the collapsing of the walls. Hannah? Um, how would it have started flowing again once they got to the other side then? Pardon? How would it have started flowing again? Yeah, okay, what will happen is that the water, the canyon will collapse, it'll, it'll make a dam, then the water will back up, back up, back up, and put more and more pressure on that dam, basically, and blow it out and then it'll come down. Have you guys ever made sandcastles with water and dams and then the water, you get enough water and the water breaks through and the, it, it go, overflows everything. So it was a miracle of God, but God may have used the, the collapsing of the Jordan. So anyway, so that's uh, basically what we want to talk about and uh, we'll catch the 12 stones next time. So. <laughs>